Alright, you're back with Al, and this is Chronicles of a Not Yet Champion Golfer. Last week, I spoke about, well, I did a roundup last week of how I'd been playing, how I'd been doing, and what it come down to was me making two tens, which was obviously very pleasing. Yep, very, very pleased. Just need to see some ducks now, and my life will be complete. But they come from bad drives. Well, several drives, I actually hit six drives on two holes. No, no. No, I think I've got obsessed with trying to hit it as far as I can, which is great to have, but I don't want to use that all the time on the course. I need to develop that stock shot a little bit further and be able to play it on the golf course, know when to use it and when I can actually go after one. And that's what this video is about today. It's going to be going out on the golf course, five tee shots, two balls per tee shot, so 10 shots. One will be a stock drive which is going to be like a little low fade for me and one will be where I try and hit it at that little bit further. I'm just driving up trying to actually find the second ball. Which tells you all you need to know really. And the reason why I do it on the golf course, not on the practice ground, is because on here there's no, no consequence. Doesn't matter if I hit it in the tree. Found him. Get off. It's just one shot, whereas we know different holes. Sometimes they suit your eye and sometimes they don't. So just to talk you through the technique here. Okay, so with the stop driver, you'll see first thing, I do most of my changes in my setup. I tee it up much lower, move it slightly further back in my stance, and I get my sternum more over the ball. And that's gonna help me to feel like I'm gonna strike down on it a little bit more, so it's gonna come out lower. I feel like the handle just pulls across it, which is gonna hit the little fade. Ball slightly further back, sternum on the left, over the ball, and just feel like I stay there, make sure I really clear my hips. From there, I just make the swing naturally. Everything's done in the setup, there's no real change of swing. Because I'm hitting the fade, I'm gonna want my alignment to be a little bit further left. So my feet are gonna be a little bit open to where my club face is. So feet are aiming left, club face where, aiming where I really where I want it to start, and just let it drift back onto the target. That's it really. Don't really want to hit any more than them because I'm actually happy with them. Always sound surprised. I shouldn't sound surprised, should I? Nearly fell over. And with the one that I want to hit further, you know, if I want to stand up there and smash it, again, a lot of it's done in the setup. I move it slightly further forward in my stance because I've got it teed up way higher, which means I'm going to hit it more on the up. So a little bit further forward in the stance, I'm gonna feel like my sternum's set behind the ball and everything's promoting me to sweep up on it. And it's gonna launch a lot higher and it should carry further. So further in the stance, sternum back. From there, make sure that my shoulders aren't, it's easy for me to tilt back and keep my shoulders open. Just close them off to make sure that path is gonna continue out to the right and then just smash it. My alignment is going to be pretty neutral because this one for me, I generally hit fade as my shot anyway, but this one should generally go a little bit straight and not have as much left to right on it. So alignment's pretty neutral. And key is for me is make sure I'm turning but still staying back behind it. Close the shoulders off. Right, let's get out on the golf course. Five holes, two tee shots each hole and we'll see if we can actually perform when we get out there. First one is the little stock low fade. Whatever shot you're trying to play, so if you're trying to play a little low fade, or it doesn't have to be low, whatever fade you're trying to play, when I approach the ball, so I stand behind it, I'll approach it from the right hand side of the ball and walk in, kind of creating from the line that I want to see the ball start on. It just allows me to see that start line a little bit easier. Like I said, with that shot, it's not going to go as far as it would the other one, I wouldn't have thought. But straight, we're in play, we're in the fairway and whatever the premium is on certain holes. And most of the time, I feel like if I can get it within 150, then I'm, I'm happy there. Within 150, that's where I feel like I can give myself the most chance of birdie. When it comes to a hole where the stock shot might get me to 180 away, whereas if I smash one, I say smash one, I hit one full out, it might get me to 150, that's when it might be worth going for it. Now this hole, 
that I'm playing is only like 425 so the benefit in hitting that one full out as opposed to making sure I give myself the best chance hitting fairway might not actually be that beneficial to me to gain them extra 20 or so yards in fact here I might have even hit it in the bunker to be honest it's those things that are worth considering worth looking at when you're actually doing this sort of exercise and as I say it's just about learning about your own game anyway let's have a look here first one fairway Actually, it's a fairway. Doubled me stats for the year. 140 yards to a pin. Middle of the fairway, perfect angle to that pin. I couldn't really be in better position there with that stock drive. Now, the second one, which I hit all right, slightly up the left, in a word. Knackered, really, in the bunker. As I thought, that shot is the one I'd play on this hole, the stock shot, because I just feel that, well, with a bunker being at 280, bang in line with where... If I hit a really good drive where I'm pitching, if I don't quite get it, it's bouncing in there all day anyway. So, but the stock one's not reaching it. And on that occasion, it was more accurate. It has been known to not be as accurate. So we'll carry on and see if that's the, uh, the trend continues with that really. But yeah, quite an interesting start. This one, par five, 516 yards. So it goes a little bit left to right the hole. I personally think it'd be better to hit one as hard as I can up the right hand side and if it's in the right semi it's not a disaster I'd rather be further up and give myself the chance of getting up in two as opposed to hitting one that's a little bit safe and and hitting that stock shot in the middle of the fairway so first one full out try and get it up that right hand side over that bunker because I'm trying to hit it up that right hand side I've teed it up on the left side of the tee as well I think it just opens up the line a little bit more and this one just trying to hit up on a little bit more bit higher launch bit more carry Whereas when I try and play a fade, I generally tee it up on the right hand side of the tee because it just again just creates that angle. Everything's just creating that image of the shot you're trying to play. Wasn't great, like a bit healy to be honest. I actually ended up looking like a stock shot even though it wasn't meant to. Uh. Yeah, stock one's good. Just hit the stock shot and just get it weak and right. Hit it further into the rough. That's the idea. That's a true representation of what happens. I'm trying to play that fade, sometimes I feel like I can overdo it. So I've got to get I've got have got to get better at it. Now, here's the two shots. There's the supposed stock fade shot. Terrible angle. So I've got 15 yards difference in the one of it full out. The one of it full out is just off the fairway. Although this hole goes left to right, to be honest, off that tee, I just seen the, the one that I could tee it up left side of the tee and smash it up the right side. I kind of knew up the right side is, is fine. So it's about knowing the course you're playing as well. And I could go for it. It was the other one. Generally, a par five, I wouldn't play that shot. And actually the results shown there that I probably am better standing up and lamping that one. I've got 215 yards to a pin rather than 230 out of a bad angle. I'm not saying I'd hit that all the time, but even the stock one would still be 15 yards back, but in the fairway, it's, I'd rather be 15 yards up and give myself that shorter shot in. It's all just about knowing what hole where you, you want to play aggressive and where you want to attack and the ones where actually you're better just making sure you find the fairway and giving yourself a shot from the short stuff rather than having a bad angle out the rough, which is where you can get flyers and all that sort of stuff. Just driving slowly here. Come out here early. You know what's coming, don't you? My mates are still in bed. Yes! Sorry, don't get up early on my behalf. Scruffy now, to be fair. Very scruffy. You can stay there. I'm, I'm just having a look. That's it. Sit down again. That's it. Sit down. No, sit down. You can sit down. I'm just I'm just here. Oh, there's another little baby thing. Right. Yeah, they're all huddled, huddled there, but stay there. I'm not bothering you. I've got new people here. Look at these. So little baby Mohan there. Ah, look at him. Wow, hissy. Hissy. Thank you, thanks. I think that's your third appearance now. It's nice to see your progress. Nice to see there's still five of you as well. Keep fighting that fight. Back to bed. Late night last night. Teenagers, aren't they? Out on the lash last night. Yeah, that's the most important bit of the video done. Goose update. Looking a bit scruffier, a bit bigger. Um, but fortunately they're all still here with us, so I'd be gutted if one day I come along and there's only four of them. Imagine that. 
That'll be the end of the videos. Got another par five now. Immediately as it's par five, my reaction is to hit one as hard as I can. It's not always the way forward, really. It's quite a bit of trouble on here. Bunkers up the left side there, about 275 to carry. Trees at the corner right shouldn't really bother us today. They're like 300. And at this time in the morning, it's funny how... It's not funny. It's not funny at all. But it's mad how much shorter the ball goes. I reckon the ball goes at least 10 yards shorter in the air at this time in the morning. So this hole goes right to left, but that immediately thinks it probably wouldn't suit that low fade but i'm still trying to hit it into a certain section of the fairway i'm not hitting it miles up where the dog leg is so look at the part of the fairway you're actually trying to hit into not the shape of the whole hole look at the distance to the point where you want to hit it into look at the shape of the hole up to that point and then pick a shot that suits so actually the stock fade may actually be quite decent here to be fair Lovely that, that is lovely. It's a shot that I probably wouldn't have chosen to play here. But actually, thinking about it in the process I just have, looking at the point of where I'm trying to hit it, although the whole shape's right to left, the drive part of it is actually still straight, and it actually suits that shot. So don't look at the whole hole as a whole, look at it as where you want to put the ball and how far that is, and what shape suits hitting it to that point. So now I'm going to try and hit one, and I'm absolutely not confident now. No! 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 I knew it before I stood up. Once I'd spoken about it and I talked it through, I kind of knew that fade shot, I was more comfortable with it. Picked my spot, it suited that the stock shot better. So then when I stood up and played the one where I was trying to hit it, those traps at 275, perfect yardage for me to pitch it in you know land it straight in the bunker so and then ended up whipping it left because i wasn't so confident and there's an absolute example of what i was talking about about being picking a shot that you're confident that you can play not one that you think you should just because you're on a par five i'm just driving up trying to actually find the second ball which tells you all you need to know really We'll look at the first one, which was the stock one. I mean, this bit of fairway here, where I've hit it too. 15 yards wide, that fairway. From there to there. And my ball is there, I found the middle of it. So the stock one has given me actually a really good angle to the green and it's middle of the fairway. It's avoided the bunkers because I was moving it off those bunkers so moving away from the trouble. And actually I couldn't have put it in a better spot. I've got 250 into the green, but I can reach that an angle, I might from the other one have 235, but I'm gonna have to chop it sideways out of a tree. Found him. Wouldn't be ideal this, to be honest. Get off. Wow. If a leaf come off there, I'd be penalised, by the way. Yeah, so... Stock one definitely takes the win. So here's a hole that's very... Um, it's, it's only short, really. 350. So distance isn't a massive key here. I want to try and get it... Once I'm within that 100 yards then you've got a very good chance of making birdie. In fact, I'd rather have it to sort of 80 yards than a wood 60. So actually playing the stock shot here, is, I would say is definitely suited to this sort of hole. So this one, I'm gonna play the smash one first, the hard one. Didn't strike it great, but it's flown pretty straight actually not bad but then we'll play the stock one and actually look at how far we've got in because although i might hit a really good one with a smash one leaving myself 60 yards isn't isn't ideal for me anyway i hate 60 yards yeah 
obviously that's why I play it. I've mentioned that in my videos before about trying to make your golf as uh, as make it as easy as you can, make it as stress free as you can. And when you stood over a shot, and right now it's only where I'm at right now. This changes, you know. Golf changes time to time. Sometimes you're really on it, and you feel like you can't miss with driver. And at that point, play for it. You know, hit every shot as if you feel like you you're smashing it. Go for it. Sometimes you're not on the game. And it's all about having that shot that when you're not playing great, that you can still actually get it in play and still put a score together, which is over the course of a season, you're gonna have those periods where you're not hitting driver great, which is probably where I'm at a little bit now. I wouldn't say I'm hitting it bad, but I've just got that slight bad one in there. And it, yeah, it's just developing the shot that you know you can actually go to and that stock fade shot there was actually a lot less stressful for me and looking at these actually it's gone further and it's in the fairway so that doesn't really make sense there's the first one left semi which is not great actually going to a pin which is on the back tier of the green and there's the stock fade one which is meant to go shorter it's actually gone nine yards further now it come out a bit lower Obviously, it depends on what the wind's doing on certain holes, but it's come out a bit lower, run a bit more, it's in the fairway. The other one wasn't bad, didn't strike it as good, which again is something to be said, whether I strike it more consistently when I'm playing the stock one, because I'm not going after it as much. The other one was all right, but it's in the rough, so only a little bit off strike-wise. takes quite a bit off, and you know, finding the middle of the club is going to help you shape it better and actually find more fairways, so... It's quite an interesting one, possibly I find the middle of the club more when I'm playing that stock shot. Should we play this one to the green and see if we can actually get it close? Yeah, yeah, let's actually finish this hole. Let's just bore in it in drivers. So we've got 87, and in theory this one should be harder to control and difficult to spin on the green coming out of the rough. Bit left. Pin eye, but left. Wasn't a very good swing, to be honest. And this one, 78, this one. Yeah. Point proven. More control out the fairway. Hit it closer. First one's probably 15 foot away, second one's probably about eight feet away. It's just easy to play from the fairway. Make sure you drive, that can actually get you in the fairway to start with. It's never good playing from the trees. We're on the 18th hole at Bromber now, which is one of the toughest holes on the course, one of the tightest tee shots on the course. Bit of a dip, trees right, trees left and it goes into a very narrow green so it's just a tight hole in general 415 yards you've got to hit driver because you don't want like five six iron into this green you want a shorter shot in as you can but with it being so tight straight away that would say to me oh well it's a stock shot you know it's getting it more likely to hit the fairway but actually the trees right and trees left are about 260 to get past i actually think it's more beneficial to be further up here than it is giving yourself more chance of hitting fairway but if you don't hit the fairway with that stock shot you could be behind the trees i'd rather go after one a little bit more and clear all the rubbish get past all the trouble because i can hit the green out the rough but i'm struggling to hit the green when my ball's stuck in a tree i'm not saying look at the trouble but you've literally got to look at the trouble to know how far it is to get past it and actually i think you're more beneficial making sure you get past that trouble than just increasing your chances of hitting the fairway because you can hit the fairway obviously with hitting one hard what outweighs the other the punishment of one and the benefit of the other and for me hitting it further here is actually more of a benefit than it is giving yourself more chance of hitting it straight if you know what i mean does that make any sense am i making any sense we'll start off with the low stock one here the green keepers on the left there so what you don't want to do here is try and get it too low too left straight over the top and drill it straight into the green keeper that never ends well 
anyway. Remember, years ago, right, when I was like, I think I was about 17, I was five under on this hole, 18, five under playing this hole. Did exactly what I've just spoke about, and straight over the top, bricked it about hitting it right, straight into that oak tree there, which was like 100 yards off, dropped out to the right, hit a three wood right at the bunker, flop shot over the bunker, and hold the putt. So it's not how, it's how many. A couple of weeks later, same position as well. I had 100 yards in, great drive, 100 yards in. Hit it right in the bunker, shanked it out, made six. So. Seriously, I couldn't see that shot then. Stood up there, couldn't see that shot, but I thought, right, I'm just gonna play it anyway, commit to it, and He's just drawn a line on this fairway because there's a comp on today and there's a nearest the line comp and I think I probably would have won it with that one. But it's funny, I couldn't see that shot. I told myself just commit to it and it's actually perfect. Again, I might prove myself wrong here with this theory of hitting it further. That one's pretty good though, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I proved, I proved myself right there. Yeah, I'm very pleased with that to finish, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. Yeah, very, very pleased. Just need to see some ducks now, and my life will be complete. Any ducks? Any ducks anywhere? No ducks. Can't have everything. Here's the freshly painted line. There's the stock one. There, he's won the nearest the line. Put the bigger ones up there. There we are. There's the pin, and we've got 128 yards. Which is nice, out of the middle of the fairway. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, I've got my bush and I'm pacing it. 128 with the stock one. And with the good smash one. Hundred and sixteen. So twelve yards. Pick him up, end on a high. Don't want to hit that one in the bunker and shank out and make six, like I just spoke about in the tee. Finished off with probably the best drives I've hit there. I'm very, very pleased with that. You can tell in the tone of my voice, can't you? Golf really determines my whole mood. Uh, and Liverpool win the Champions League determines my whole mood actually. I've been singing songs in my head on repeat over and over and over and over again since that. Um, but that's not for this video because I don't want like people that don't support Liverpool to unfollow me. Um, but there is there's something that the cop want you to know. The best in the world is Bobby Firmino. So that, that's it. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. So those last two drives finished off, actually I was pleased I hit that, the smash one good because that's the shot I would choose to play there is the one where I'd clear past the trouble. I feel knowing, stood over the ball hitting that one, I feel more comfortable because I think, well, I actually can miss this and I'm not going to be in too much trouble. The worst it's going to be is in the rough. Whereas with the stock one, I'm thinking, well, if I hit this offline, I could be in trees and I could be in serious trouble. So there's a time and a place when the stock one is the safer shot to go to and there's a time when actually the smash one might be a safer shot to go to. And I think that on that occasion, that was probably one of those. It's quite an interesting exercise, really, just to get used to what whole suit, what sort of shots that you're playing, you know what ones you actually feel more comfortable with. You know, so if we go through the holes there, the first one, there was a bunker at 280. The stock one come out on top there, hit a good drive, middle of the fairway on that. The other one was pretty good, but it's in the, in the bunker. So that's about knowing your yardage and actually thinking, okay, the little fade will take a little bit off. And the, the stock shot actually suited that shot better. The next one, the par five. Yeah, the hole went left to right, but actually the stock one was, wasn't a good shot on that occasion, but I think I'd rather be further up and give myself the chance of hitting the green in two on there because it's quite a wide hole. I could afford to miss it, so I think that was the shot to go for on that one. And then the next one, the the next par five we played, 
Again, looking at the area I had to in, hit it into, we said, what, that fairway was 14 yards wide, very narrow, and anything left or right, it's probably going to be blocked out, so I didn't want to go any further than that, really, and the bunkers were a perfect landing distance if I was trying to hit one at, like, you know, 275, 280, so the stock shot was the shot actually thinking through, I probably would have chosen the smash one to start with, but thinking through, the stock one was, well, it turned out to be the shot to play. Uh, it was middle of the fairway and would have given me a shot in and the other one was stuck in a tree so yeah the stock one was definitely the shot to play there which is interesting it's just the process i went through of thinking about it and that's what these videos do for me it makes me think about things more rather than just standing up there and hitting the shot that i'm used to playing or the shot that i feel that most people should hit not specific to me next one the straight hole the 12th that one Again, the stock was a better shot. I didn't strike the smash one very good, really. Um, but again, I wasn't comfortable with that shot. The stock shot suited that hole better. And it's funny when, when a hole suits that shot better and you feel more comfortable, it's more often that you strike it better that way because you commit to it better. And it's all very well saying stand there and commit. But it's harder to do it if you don't feel comfortable with that shot and then the last hole then well that's just a prime example that sometimes the 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 one you're hitting harder for me is a safer shot i knew i was getting past all the trouble i knew if i missed it there was room for error whereas with the stock shot i wasn't granted i hit a really good one with the stock drive but 116 yards into a pin i was actually better angle with the smash one than than the stock one is a better position to be in and coming out of the fairway well it's just a bonus really it is just a bonus so I think I've learned a lot. It's not like, as I said, it's not about I'm not going to hit just one or the other the whole way round. It's just knowing where and when I should play each shot. I need to get better at both of them. I need to practice it more, definitely. But I'll do that. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday.